first Sinjin really grew the tour. Let's just be quick about it. Mm-hmm. In the 80s. And he, he wanted a bigger tour. And, you know, he kind of passed it off to me. And I was the number one player. I was on the board of directors. Knew everybody. Sponsors everybody. I did a lot of the promotions. You know, Karch at the time I was having had young kids, so he was kind of doing that at the time. And he was big time. and already won gold medals and all that. So we literally took the tour. Then, then when the AVP and the FIV got in their fight, Sinjin went again with Ruben Acosta and built a huge tour on the FIVB tour. It's, yeah. it's not difficult. It's not, a, it's not a tough thing to do. And if you look at sort of both the tours, they're probably doing, like, almost everything wrong. Like, everything we didn't do, they're doing, and nothing we did are they doing, and the results are bizarre. Right. You know, so, yeah, I wrote the plan. Here's the business plan right here, everybody. Oh, my God. <laughs> on the page. I'm, I went to Stanford. <laughs> I'm an MBA gold. from Stanford. This is, <laughs> I used to side out, hit a cut shot from the right. Now I do business points. I heard more about the high line. Everyone talks no, that's about back. you got to get back to the line. Uh, yeah, you got to go. So you're driving them in. Apparently you're supposed wait, to not don't to tell go everybody. Right just, tell me, just tell me this. <laughs> right side. Go right to left. Everybody, the, Halleck's told me all coaches tell, tell everybody to go in straight. I'm like, what's up with that? So he's, he's so telling me like I'm wrong. That angle. He was telling me I'm wrong by going right mm-hmm. to left. Mm. Even though I'm the winningest player of all time. But forget about that. <laughs> and then, so you're driving, and then you go right back to the line every time. They're just, it's, it's, I had two shots. I actually noticed I had that. an angle shot and a line shot. I had two shots. And where are you supposed to hit it? Where they're not. That's right. Hey. If you want to win beach volleyball tournaments, hit it where they're not. It's a simple game. <laughs> Make a t-shirt. Win every time. Here's the business plan. Yeah, wait, what is this? It's three pages, and that's how you do a beach volleyball tour. So who right do there. we give this to? That's the, that's the <laughs> they question. Want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> that, so we did it in the 90s. Sinjin did it in the 80s. Sinjin and Ruben did it again on the FIVB. So I do want to dig into to some of the specifics because you mentioned everything that you guys were doing in the 80s and 90s, now we're not doing. Yes. And everything that we weren't doing, they're doing. What are some of the things that you guys were doing in the 80s and 90s that is absent today? First of all, you got to have a beach volleyball tournament. That always helps because if you want people to watch beach volleyball, you actually have to have a tournament. Yeah. And they don't have beach volleyball tournaments. They have exhibitions. So if you look at sports, again, one of the problems is, is everybody watches sports. So everyone thinks they know sports or knows the business of sports. But you got to study it and you got to learn it and you got to know business and you got to know sports. Mm-hmm. So what you see is if you have a preseason game or an exhibition, you have far less fans than if you have an actual athletic contest. Mm-hmm. Right. So, you know, even in, say, the even in large sports, games that aren't the championships or the good ones, less people watch. So if you have a sport like beach volleyball, which is not that it's 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 not a very large sport. And there's reasons for that. There's technical reasons for that. It's uh, complexity, narrative and communication. So you have to make sure that you get the largest audience you can. All right. And you do that by having an actual beach volleyball tournament. And ready? Here's the here it is, guys. You collect the world's best beach volleyball players, all of them, and you have them play. <laughs> and guess what? Anybody can play, and anybody can show up who wants to participate. That's how it works. Name me a sport, one sport, and we'll get into, into sports roulette, and this yeah. is not sports roulette, because you can't just pick <laughs> a sport, the one you like, say we should be like this. you got to go across those sports. <laughs> Name me a sport where I can't right now walk in and go win the championship if I'm good enough. It doesn't exist. Except in Beach Volleyball with the Elite 16 coming to you next, where? Paris? No. Paris. Hamburg this weekend. Well, Hamburg this weekend, Paris in a couple weeks, about a month. Right? Yeah. So that's the first thing. They have restricted tournaments. They don't have an athletic contest. They don't have a Beach Volleyball tournament. And that's important. It's important on a psychological level. So we talked about complexity, narrative, and communication. Sports that are more complex have larger followings. Mm -hmm. You know, football is a very complex sport. Offense, defense, special teams. You got 11 guys on each side, plus a kicker, plus a field goal guy, plus a holder, plus a long snapper. You can run, you can throw. You know, the offense, you got a center, you got a lineman, you got wide receivers, you got a quarterback, you got a fullback, you got a running back. That's a lot. You got, on Beach Volley, we got right and left side guy. Right. You got, ready? Just hit the ball. Blocker, <laughs> defense. that hit. <laughs> if you look at it from another direction, um, the javelin throw is a very non-complex sport. Mm -hmm. Guy runs with a stick, throws it. Well, you know, you find that sports that are less complex have less following. So you have to do things in sports that have low complexity in order to generate the the maximum crowd that you can. Like tennis, right, would be one person hitting a ball back and forth. Less complex, right? Uh, It's less complex, but in that case, they have an incredibly large um, um, equipment Mm. industry surrounding them. So they have rackets, shoes... 
in this, and they do it right. They have the ready. They bring the entire world's the best yeah. tennis players right. to certain spots, right. and they feature them. They have they have majors, okay. So they focus on four. Uh, if you take the top four tennis players, uh, let's you take Federer, Nadal, Medvedev, and uh, Djokovic, and you stick them in Madison Square Garden on an exhibition, you'll have some interest because right. tennis is huge. You put them in New York at the U.S. Open in the biggest tennis tournament in the world, and seven hundred fifty thousand people pay tickets. Tens of millions of people watch them on TV. It's not that difficult. Okay. Right. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, is that if you don't have a local presence at the tournament site, a local promoter, you're done. Tournaments are incredibly complex to run. They're very operationally intense is the, is the actual technical term. It takes a lot. And you can't run them from Orange County or you can't run them from Switzerland. Somebody on the ground has got to be responsible for that tournament. In the 90s, even though we had Miller as a sponsor, Miller – has their distributor network. So Miller doesn't sell beer to people. They sell beer to distributors. So Mm -hmm. in every city we went to, the local distributor was responsible for marketing the tour, getting the tour together, the, you know, getting the the city on board, doing the local promotion, going the advertising and all that. Right. Who is the local promote? Who is the local promoter in Fort Lauderdale? Who's the guy? Like the Vanderwerp of... I don't yeah, uh, think uh, there was. Exactly. I don't think there is, right? Yeah, couldn't tell. Right? Well, if nobody's there whipping up, you know... It's uh, just the AVP. They're just coming to town and doing it. Yeah, well, right? there you go. So, and you see what happens. Got, yeah, yeah, yeah. They got to know the local bars or whatever, like uh, places to market, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, plus, you, you if, if you don't have a local presence, you're not going to get... You're not going to get the revenue that you can get on the on the local side, which makes the tournament like uh, 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 viable okay there's two things that the avp and bally's are doing wrong now or there's two and two things that volley world and cvc ready they are vastly over overestimating how much revenue can come into the sport okay vastly over overestimating if you look at their business plans i haven't seen them i don't know them but i guarantee them if they showed them to you they'd have revenue projections which are insane all right uh, at the height of beach volley in the united states we we're doing eight and a half million dollars total revenue one gender Right. One gender. Yeah. So well, there wasn't even really women's, women's beach volleyball back then. Right. Okay, we grabbed the tour and kind of brought some of them on. Right. You know, and, and I think when Leonard ripped it up in the 2000s, it got to 10 million. So if, if, Bally's, if Bally's of your projections are over three or four million, you, you, you've, somebody's been snowing you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you can get beach volleyball in the United States to four million dollars, they'll put a statue of you on the Manhattan Pier. Right. <laughs> You're like, you'll be a hero of beach volleyball. The second thing is, again, they, they underestimate how complicated it is to run an event. All right. My partner, Tracy Sang, how you doing? She always likes it when I mention her. <laughs> Love Trace. Yeah. Hi, Tracy. Delaney, too. You're special. <laughs> Gabby, right? Yeah. Get them yep. all in. There we go. So, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, she, what she does for a living is she has a living, puts on events. All right. She worked for Los Angeles Magazine before she worked for Philly Magazine. She worked for Sunset Magazine. She does events. And she can get you on right here and she'll tell you everything you're doing wrong in the events, beach volleyballs, and what you need to do to do them right. Wow. And she, she does like the Malibu food and wine event. And they're really complicated. They take a lot of work. You need a lot of people working together. And so they are sort of underestimating how complicated it is to run an event. And they're also, they're also overestimating, oh my God, the, I think I, I, the, the dream of these, t- of say the volleyball world, I would imagine, or AVP Bally's, is that they're gonna they're gonna get some sort of like revenue from a tour. So somebody's gonna pay them a rights fee to put on the tour. <laughs> they don't make money, right? right? If they made money, people would be putting them on. Mm. All right, they're right. hard to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what you really want to do is you want these local promote these local people. You want them to give you beach volleyball tournaments. Then if you're the company, then you sell. You sell this tour now. And there's ways to do it. It's all right here. I'm telling you. <laughs> I want to see this. <laughs> Here's the business plan. And I got the old business plan we did in 2010. It had a cool volleyball, actually. You know, it's like, <laughs> it, was a, it was a graphic. I, I don't do graphics. <laughs> but so. Now, you. Does that make sense? It makes perfect sense. What about, sense. like, the, uh, the product itself? Like, what is the, the product? product what beer are we drinking? Let's give a little shout out to. S- yeah. Kona Brewing Kona Company. Brew. Big Wave Golden Ale. Liquid Aloha. Yes. Liquid Aloha. Appreciate there you it. go. Thank you, Kona. Thank you for supporting the tour, too. That's well, I awesome. feel like Thanks, one thing that our sport is missing big time, and obviously I'm biased because I'm one of the players, is building up the characters, the people that, like you're mentioning, the Nadals and Djokovic and them. The only, why do people come to the event? Because those guys are celebrities, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you got to build up these characters, and really the only people helping do that for us is us. 
and the, <laughs> like, the McKibbins and the McKibbins, right? <laughs> yeah. who, are, who are players because they can kind of understand that. Back in the day, I don't know how it was for you. It seems like you guys were basically running the tour at the same time while playing. Oh yeah, so it was a lot. Different. I was. See, so <laughs> <Simply> <laughs> was. you were right. Yeah, John Stevenson, Mike Dodd. <laughs> okay. It's a lot yeah. different than how it's yeah. going today. But I feel like we're kind of going that direction where we're kind of realizing like. If we want something to happen, we better do it ourselves. Well, it's funny, but you said that, right? Complexity, narrative, communication. Mm-hmm. We got into complexity. Now we're talking narrative, mm-hmm. right? The stories that you can tell right. out of a sport. And it can be challenging, especially in sort of a tour sport where you have a ranking because it's the same guys are kind of at the top. What you, what you do not see now, which we had back in the 90s, was there was an, in, there was an industry surrounding the sport. Right. So volleyware was like $200 million, depending on it. There was, there's an industry. And so we had individual sponsors. You, you could tell right away, look at a tournament. Go, go back and look at our tournaments. Look at the new tournaments, what, how we're draped in sponsors. Yeah. Right. Like we were like NASCAR <laughs> racers, yeah, okay? For sure. I, like, I got I, I a ridiculous hat with five different freaking Hawaiian tropics on it. I had a sh- big feel. <laughs> Big ass feel in my butt. I had like Ford. I had yeah. I had Oakley glasses, and they were responsible for promoting us, right? Uh. So we worked. I we worked with the, the so. All right, the tour had a PR agency. The individual, you know, the promoter who was the distributor had PR and advertising. We work with them. Um, our sponsors were promoting us because, again, the more we got ourselves out there, the more they got us out there, the more money we made from our sponsors. So right. everybody's winning. Everybody's happy. That's the difference, you see. So that what are you talking about? We're talking about promoting the athletes. Well, who's going to do it? Okay, who? where's the money coming from? So for us, it was I wanted to go promote myself because I got better sponsors, more money from my sponsors. My sponsors promoted me. They put me in advertising. They put me in uh, magazine um, ads. They put me in all sorts of stuff. The tour wanted to promote the tour, so they put us on, you know, Good Morning America. They put us on The Tonight Show. They put us on, well, I guess it would be now, pod, they, you, know, you go out and do podcasts right. or, or whatever. <clears throat> and they don't do that. Wow. Yeah, we wow. that <laughs> yeah. big time. <laughs> and they wonder, like, well, I, well nobody's coming. Gee. Yeah. <laughs> Shocking. Right. <laughs>